defeated Ali Reza Akhbari, a British Iranian dual national. I know that the thoughts of the whole House will be with his wife and two daughters at the time of their loss. They have shared his ordeal, an ordeal which began just over three years ago when he was lured back to Iran. He was detained and then subject to the notorious and arbitrary legal process of the regime. Before his death, Mr Akbari described what was done to him and how torture had been used. Let there be no doubt he fell victim to the political vendettas of a vicious regime. His execution was the cowardly and shameful act of a leadership which thinks nothing of using the death penalty as a political tool to silence dissent and settle internal scores. In February last year, Mr Akbari's family asked the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office for our support, and we have worked closely with them ever since. I want to pay tribute to their courage and their fortitude throughout this terrible period. In line with their wishes, my noble friend Lord Ahmed, the Minister of State, lobbied Iran's most senior diplomats in the UK as soon as we learned that Mr Akbari's execution was imminent. We maintained the pressure right up until the point of his execution, but sadly, to no avail. When we heard of the tragic news on Saturday morning, we acted immediately to demonstrate our revulsion. I ordered the summoning of Iran's charge d'affaires to the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office to make clear the strength of our feeling. Our ambassador in Tehran delivered the same message to a senior foreign ministry official. Ten other countries have publicly condemned the execution, including France, Germany and the United States. The European Union has done the same, and I am grateful for their support at this time. We then imposed sanctions on Iran's Prosecutor General, Mohammad Jafar Montazeri, who bears heavy responsibility for the use of death penalty for political ends. His designation is the latest of over 40 sanctions imposed by the UK on the Iranian regime since October, including six individuals linked to the revolutionary courts which have passed egregious sentences against protesters, including the death penalty. In addition, I have temporarily recalled His Majesty's Ambassador Simon Shirtcliffe from Tehran for consultations, and we met and discussed this earlier today. Now we should consider what further steps, alongside our allies, we take to counter the escalating threat from Iran. We do not limit ourselves to the steps that I have already announced. Mr Akbari's execution follows decades of pitiless repression by a ruthless regime. Britain stands with the brave and dignified people of Iran as they demand their rights and freedoms. Just how much courage that takes is shown by the appalling fact that over 500 people have been killed and 18,000 have been arrested during a recent wave of protests. Instead of listening to the calls for change within Iran, the regime has resorted to its usual tactics of blaming outsiders and lashing out against its supposed enemies, including by detaining a growing number of foreign nationals for political gain. Today, there are many European nationals being held in Iranian prisons on spurious charges, including British dual nationals. And I pay tribute to our staff, both in Tehran and here in the UK, who continue to work tirelessly on their behalf and to secure their release. And beyond its borders, the regime has supplied Russia with hundreds of armed drones used to kill civilians in Ukraine. Across the Middle East, Iran continues to inflict bloodshed and destruction by supporting extremist militias. And all the while, the steady expansion of the Iranian nuclear program is threatening international peace and security and the entire system of global non-proliferation. In the last three months alone, Britain has imposed five separate packages of sanctions on Iran, and today we enforce designations against over 300 Iranian individuals and entities. 
We have condemned the regime in every possible international forum, securing Iran's removal from the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, and alongside our partners, creating a new UN mechanism to investigate the regime's human rights violations during these recent protests. But the House should be in no doubt that we are witnessing the vengeful actions of a weakened and isolated regime, obsessed with suppressing its own people, debilitated by its own fear of losing power and wrecking its international reputation. Our message to that regime is clear. The world is watching you and you will be held to account, particularly by the brave Iranian people, so many of whom you are oppressing and killing. And I commend this statement to the House. Yeah. Yeah.